Okay, great. Um, thank you. Um, so this is what the sort of general outline of the talk is going to be. First, briefly introducing the what I call pre-Ario Dravidian typology of the morphosyntax syntax of the Munda languages. So prior to having been heavily influenced by contact with Dravidian and in, in, in Aryan languages in India. And then um, talking specifically about the um, two patterns that we see, the, the head marking patterns of encoding things and the dependent marking patterns that we see and how they interact. Um, and we'll start with subject marking and look at head marking for subject and then the dependent marking for subject and then both of those for object marking and then the languages that head and dependent mark simultaneously and then summary. So, okay, so pre proto Munda, that is the dialect of proto Austroasiatic that was the immediate ancestor of proto Munda, presumably maintained many or all of the older AA features, Austroasiatic. So, this would be verb initial syntax with a variant of verb medial syntax, a mild degree of integration of materials into large words, some limited verb noun stem combining, and possibly a, a case particle or proclitic or um, whatever its morphotactic status is used only with pronouns. Um, but contact has altered this quite dramatically over the centuries um, and millennia. Now, by the time we get to Proto-Munda, so from pre-Proto-Munda, which presumably is an Austroasiatic-like looking thing, to Proto-Munda, a significant change occurred. So um, what we see in Proto-Munda is uh, the template at the bottom here, which is a uh, proclitic of first and second person subjects, followed by negatives, followed by a verb, tense aspect marker, uh, tense aspect mood and object thing, and then an uh, optional and clitic third plural marker, which could encode either subject or object. Um, now, this is very similar to what we see on languages on the very periphery of South Asia now. So, Kiranti languages in the Tibeto Buran family, Lurashaski, um, and Munda. And so, presumably, when the Austroasiatic speakers arrived in the part of India that they're currently in, um, they encountered a language, now lost, that had features like this, that it had subject marked by a prefix, objects or a proclitic objects by a suffix, and verb final syntax. So the entire like complex shifted to the end of the, of the clause. So this whole chain went to the end. Uh, and so the, the uh, proto language syntax is verb final and the template of the verb structure is this. So, so how do we mark head marking in these languages? We'll first start with Sora. So this um, yesterday they didn't give you any water. Anandji, Ribbon, Anandji. Here we have the third plural clinic at the end. It's marked here as a it doesn't seem to be a suffix. Um, and then the second person marker uh, for the undergoer or object. Now here we see the other pattern of the personal pronoun subject and then the object at the end. So this is your typical pattern that I was just in standing up talking about. Okay, we see this across different Munda languages. Here we have Zhuang and Gurum, two other Munda languages with a similar structure, subject prefix, object suffix. Head marking. These are head marking systems. <laughs> now, Kirwarian languages have a slightly different system. Theirs um, still has bound object markers, but rather than the proclitic to the verb, the clitic has moved to the word immediately preceding the verb. So it's now enclitic to whatever immediately precedes the verb. And it's not a second position clitic. You can have a very long sentence but the subject is going to occur as an enclitic on the word immediately preceding the verb, even if that word is itself the subject pronoun. Okay, so that it's, it's, a, it's a true agreement system. And it is, this is what you call a type five clitic. It's a, not very common distribution, but it's, it, it's, it is always this way. Um, now, some of the languages are more heavily influenced by Indo-Aryan like Birhor. And what we're seeing in Birhor is a migration of the subject clitic to the end of the verb. Uh, so that, that follows in line with Indo-Aryan patterns. So Virhor is a heavily influenced by Indo-Aryan language. Um, it's a quite endangered language, so. Okay. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about the differential marking of agent 
or subject, let's say, in, uh, in Sora. So in Sora, there's a split between whether a more agentive subject or a more undergoer type subject is encoded. And the more agentive subjects are encoded like subjects, and the more, uh, that is what looks formally like the subject markers, and the more um, undergoer type ones uh, have uh, the object agreement. So I see you, object, but you are scared of her, also the object form of the second person. So this is a, uh, and this is consistent across uh, Sora. So we have a kind of a, a transitive split S system or something. Um, so differential subject marking of subject basically isn't really, uh, in terms of the dependent marking, doesn't exist. So there aren't any subject cases. There's no nominative case, there's no ergative case or anything like that. However, there are some oblique or object cases uh, uses in some of the languages in the northern part of the Munda territory that look like they might be shifting in kind of an ergative type function, presumably under influence from indo -Arab. Um, So now, as I mentioned, experience or subjects have a particular uh, sometimes object-like look to their um, structure in terms of the morphological encoding, but in terms of the syntactic functions, it's quite varied. Sometimes they still maintain subject functions and sometimes not, but that's a complicated subject for maybe another SEALs meeting. So, okay, now differential object marking. First, we'll start with Santali. So Santali distinguishes direct and indirect objects, and they distinguish this by the use uh, or lack of this applicative marker, ah. So the subject, the object marker is still the same e in both of these. You made me run or don't tell me. But uh, one it has, still has this applicative marker. So they distinguish morphologically in the head marking system between direct and indirect objects. That's actually fairly uncommon in the Munda languages. What we typically find in the Munda languages uh, that do have uh, dependent marking um, or, or head marking is rather a, uh, what is a primary object pattern. So where uh, transitive uh, patients and ditransitive recipients pattern together. Basically, okay. And um, now, one thing that's interesting about uh, the dependent marking system is in, in Sora is that uh, we, we see a split in the uh, distribution of the case marker. So, if it's a pronoun, a first or second person pronoun, the case marker appears as a prefix or proclitic. But if it's a third person uh, noun, pronoun or a noun, an NP, then it occurs as a suffix. Okay, so this is a a consistent pattern. So if you mark uh, this case on the, uh, the pronouns is a prefix and the case on the um, anything else is a suffix. So, or proclitic. That's one of the things we're working on is trying to determine what the prosodic integration of these things are. So sometimes I'll say clitic, sometimes I'll say affix, but that's because I'm hedging specifically because we don't know yet that we're crunching this data right now for Sora. So. Um, the interesting thing is that uh, there's one variety of Sora that's undergoing a shift, and that's Jirai. So here we see Arsit Sora, we have the Dong Nam, so that's the pattern I just mentioned. But here we say Man Adon, so it's normalizing the first and second persons to the rest of the, the nominal encoding system. So that's a shift that's undergone. Nevertheless, it still keeps the dependent, the head marking system, with the agreement the same. Okay. Just another example of the same phenomenon from another SOAR variety, Langius SOAR versus Jirai SOAR. And um, again, just further examples of Jirai still keeps the head marking, the dependent marking system normalizes pronouns with, with uh, nouns. Okay, now turning to a different uh, language, we see the same pattern, but with different formal markers. This is a language called Hilgata. So Hilgata has a prefix or pronouns as the object marker in the dependent marking system. And it has a suffix uh, in, with nouns. So this is a, a strict split between nouns and pronouns in this language. Um, now you will note that there is no dependent marking of object uh, in the verb, only subject. So it, kata has lost uh, object agreement. Um, so that only, it only has subject agreement. Um, I, I should say this, the one thing I didn't do because I was looking at um, 
uh, declarative sentences of the template I showed you. In the imperatives, the, the pattern in one that's typically this is verb subject like that. So that, that's the one exception where uh, you see a different pattern um, consistently with imperatives. Okay, um, now if we look at Plains guitar, we see a slightly different system. Here we find this ke, uh, ke or ke, this suffix with marking objects. Um, and that's, of course, all uh, nominal objects. But pronominal objects have a double marked. Uh, they have the a uh, prefix and the ke suffix. So they've basically migrated the ke into, much like we saw dry, normalize the pronoun versus noun distinction. Uh, so too is this language decided that, you know, ke should mark object even if a uh, does too with the pronouns. Okay, now experience or subjects I mentioned, we saw in Sora how that was marked in a, or these more like undergoer type subjects uh, get marked morphologically as, as um, objects in the dependent, in the head marking system. Well, that's also true in Plains Guitar, the dependent marking system. So they will mark experience or subjects, et cetera, with a, like an object, like a morphological object. Um, now, in the case of Guitar, it's very clear that this ke is alone from a variety of Oria called Desia, um, or Indo Aryan, maybe it's not Oria, but it's the local tribal Indo Aryan uh, lingua franca. Um, we find this ke across all kinds of substandard varieties of, of Oria um, across Orissa. Um, so, a little bit on other languages, we see this pattern in the southern Munda area pretty consistently, where we find a, a pronoun marked by a prefix, object marked by something else. In the case here, we have, again, we have a vowel prefix, O, oh, and it, another borrowed suffix here. This one is a Dravidian word, so not Indo Aryan. Um, and next page, we see the, the, the pronoun. So, pronoun. And here, here's a nice uh, example of experience or subjects and the differentiation of pronouns and nouns. So, um, so this, the subject of no is marked as an object, okay? And here we have pronoun, pronoun, noun, noun. Okay, so the pattern is fairly consistent. Okay. Ramo has just the ah, uh, so it has just this ah uh, proclitic. And so it's, it's gone the other way, it's normalized the ah. Uh, and didn't borrow the care, or didn't borrow anything else, it just said ah marks object across. So it extended it from the pronoun to the noun system. So again, there was a, probably a differential object system in, in Ramo at one point, and then it got normalized to have it be pronouns and nouns be the same. So on a primary object pattern, we see this across the area. Okay. So the indirect object of a ditransitive and the direct object of a transitive verb are basically treated the same. So this is the so-called primary object pattern. And it's an aerially common pattern. Um, so presumably secondary in Linda derived from contact with uh, other local languages. Now, Karia uh, doesn't have a uh, differential system at all. It uses this te, which is probably an old Austroasiatic element repurposed into this function. Um, and uh, interestingly, uh, here, here we find everything's the same, pronouns, objects, and also only dependent marking. Kari is one of the handful of Munda languages that doesn't mark um, object in the verb. Uh, interestingly, um, within Karya, uh, they're still different, even though their primary object pattern morphologically is the same. Um, P's but not R's can be made subjects of passive with Karya. So even though they're marked the same morphologically, syntactically, they're clearly distinct. So. Um, Duang uh, has the same cognate te, but interestingly, it's a um, definitely a suffix in Duang, but it's a clitic, an enclitic in Karya. So the morphotactic integration is distinct between those two languages, even while they have the same uh, element. And here we see Duang still has a marking in the verb of the object, and it double marks it, marks the object, in the dependent marking, and in the head marking system simultaneously. So this common pattern we see in various Munda languages uh, where we have the object marked uh, both in the head and dependent mark system simultaneously. So that, that's 
that for the languages that have the dependent marking system and still maintain object agreement, that's the, that's the default structure. Um, one is the older one for sure. So now um, some more on head and dependent marking in um, Beerhor. Beerhor just uses ke. It doesn't differentiate the object of um, the indirect object or direct object on the um, on the noun at least and the verb reader. Um, and they, they double encode as well. So in red, you see the double encoding head and dependent marking system interact. So Tamaria Mundari is another uh, Perwarian language. And this system is kind of similar, except for that what we see is the dependent mark system doesn't like to mark inanimate. So here we're having an animacy based split in the distribution of object marking. Um, but it will still encode inanimate objects as objects in the head marking system, the verb. So the dependent marking system shows a split, um, but the head marking system doesn't. Okay. That's, when the languages are complicated. <laughs> okay. This is what the lesson learned today is. <laughs> okay. Um, and here we do find uh, a distinction uh, in the head marking system that I was saying between direct and indirect objects while the dependent marking system doesn't differentiate them. So they hit me, ke, kin, so no applicative, gave to me, ke, a, e. Okay, so they are distinguished in the head marking system, but not distinguished in the dependent marking system. And like all the other kes that we've seen, <laughs> these are loans from Indo Aryan. In the case of the Mandari varieties and Ho, uh, we're dealing with Sadri, which is a, another Indo Aryan tribal lingua franca spoken in Jharkhand uh, and in the tea gardens in Assam. Um, so Kara Mandari has a kind of similar system, um, but its functional differentiation. Is, is distinct. So Tamaria Mundari had the primary object pattern. It could only mark one, either a direct object or an indirect object, and preferentially the indirect object if both exist in one sentence. But Kara Mundari, another variety of um, Mundari says, no, no, it's okay. You can we'll mark both with the same element at the same time. And here we have a nice little, another Munda thing where Mutri is a inanimate. Um, so it doesn't like plural marking, but can still, in the head marking system still take plural. So it's a it's a, getting a split between the sensitivities of the head marking system and the sensitivities of the dependent marking system as they interact. And um, another interesting thing is that in uh, Kara Mundari, we're dealing with a suffix. In Tamaria Mundari, the same element is, a, is an enclitic. Okay, so the morphotactic integration is different. And what this means is they weren't borrowed from the same time by the same people. That did not happen in Proto-Mandari. It happened separately in Karamandari and Tamari Mandari. Um, and uh, Anna Puchulowski had an interesting comment in her work on Ho, saying that as far as the uh, speaker's sort of relationship to these two, the Ke seems wrong even to older speakers of Ho, but younger people use it all the time. And therefore they're very much uh, except that the, the dependent marking system is foreign and the head marking system is what their normal system should be. That's, that's the sort of impression that, that, that Ho speakers have about this structure. And uh, as I was saying, this is very clearly a borrowing from Sadri, AKA Sadani. So um, lastly, Korku has the same Ke. It also has a primary object pattern but the language it borrowed it from is called Nimadi. So yet another different Indo-Aryan language. So. so what we can conclude is that the apparent correspondences with these Ke markers is just that they aren't old. They are parallel separate innovations in different languages that happened at different times. Um, and overall, there's clearly been a partial restructuring of the differential object marking system in various language specific ways that has happened through language contact. So to summarize, pre-proto-munda may have had only this pronominal object marked, it's debatable. Um, but by the time we got to proto-munda, what we were dealing with is very clearly a head marking system to encode verbs, subjects, and objects. And 
we have been proposing because none of the <laughs> contemporary languages of the area have that structure that Munda may have been in contact with a, a South Asian language now lost that gave them these typological features because they didn't come to South Asia and just acquire South Asian features. Yes, verb finality, but this is very unusual structures for Dravidian and the Aryan, which are the two major language families that they're in contact with. So clearly there was some other contact event that had to have happened at that point. Um, and then subsequently, once that system uh, existed, it's gone off on its own uh, different way. And each language has had various subsequent contacts that has affected that language's grammatical system in different ways. And so there has been a um, sort of, not random, but a very complicated distribution of, the, of these um, predilection to the dependent and head marking systems and how they interact. And so when you look at the sort of whole typology of Munda, it's very complicated as I just presented. Um, but um, one thing we can say is that while object marking seems to be moving towards um, dependent marking, uh, the subject uh, marking still seems fairly clearly head marking uh, with the caveat that there are different morphotactic uh, characteristics of those uh, subject markers. They can be proclitics, they can be prefixes, enclitics or suffixes. And with that, I say thank you very much for this. This is my summary. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you very much for the very interesting talk. Um, so it looks like there was a